What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and I'm a little bit of behind in upload, but I'm finally bringing you last week's ILL match that I had against Master Roshi. Uh, he actually doesn't have a YouTube channel, but I will link his um, Twitter in the description just in case you're interested in facing him because he is a fantastic battler and you may recall that early on I actually lost against him in the preseason. So um, I definitely knew that I had my work cut out for me here. It was a little bit difficult to predict what he was going to bring. Uh, for example, he had access to Heatran, and I definitely thought he would bring that, even though it's not a full stop to something like um, Mega Charizard Y, or even the Latios with right hidden power, or Earthquake coverage, or Focus Blast on Charizard. Uh, but he didn't end up bringing that. Instead, he did go with Mega Sableye, which I did kind of expect him to bring. And uh, he had what was most likely a Scarf Staraptor, and ditto in the back gave me so many problems this video. I will go ahead and warn you. This was a 45 turn match. And that's because of the number of mind games that were going on throughout the battle. So um, on my end, of course, I have Custap Berry Crustle. This is the first time I'm bringing Crustle for the entire season. I drafted it very, very early in my first draft. And I just never really saw an opportunity to bring it with Fortress beating it out at every turn. But with the opportunity for him to bring Heatran, didn't want to bring Fortress. Uh, of course, I also have a very, very nice banded Crawdont alongside um, Draco Plate Drake Algae just for wall breaking power. He doesn't really have any good switch ins to either one of those, but they are both threatened by the correct um, Pokemon on his side. In addition to that, I have a Life Orb Latios with enough special attack to 2 hit KO, Clefable with a Psy Shock, and then I have my own scarfed um, Rotom. Uh, and I did go with Wildfire, the Charizard, yet again, just because I didn't think that I needed the speed for this battle. Because uh, if he was going to bring Scarf Star Raptor or Scarf Mammal Swine, then I would lose that speed anyway. So I really wanted the power to really to, to force him into some awkward situations. Now, as far as leads go, I was very tempted to start off with Charizard Y, but I was also afraid that he would start off with um, either uh, his own Ditto or Sableye, which I was worried about him having some type of weird coverage or hidden power rock somewhere in there. Uh, we just exchanged stealth rocks at the beginning, which is not bad at all, because uh, I can, Defog goes away with my Latios, uh, and not really sure what he wanted to go for here. I just stay in and set up some spikes just to start putting pressure on his team immediately, because so many things are grounded. Sableye hasn't Mega Evolved yet. This is very, very good. Now Sableye does come in here, and I actually just stayed in and went for the offensive move, kind of expecting Sableye to come in. I really wanted to force him in a position to where he would need to recover, and without the Mega Evolution, he can't take two Rock Slides, which is really, really nice. Um, I was afraid of missing after, and of course I get a little bit lucky that they're not getting paralyzed, so I just go for X Scissor instead there, and um, he's still forced to recover. Very, very nice. And he can't even go for the Will-O-Wisp threat because I'm already paralyzed. So I, he's really just waiting for me to get, um, he's waiting for me to get fully paralyzed. But let's go ahead and use this opportunity, predicting the recover to come in here and bring in Charizard. Uh, that way, if he did have a dark type coverage move, I knew I could come in here and roost up. And also since I don't have a lot of, I don't have max speed on this Charizard, I just have enough to outrun something like an Adamant Star Raptor. I'm able to put a little bit more in HP, and um, or rather my defenses actually. And I'm gonna get off the Mega Evolution here, which is really, really nice because he brings in Ditto, and that means his Charizard is not Mega Evolve, which is crucial because that means I can actually 2 hit KO him with Flamethrower, which is pretty impressive. Between Ditto having much lower HP than Charizard naturally would, uh, and Charizard's inferior bulk compared to um, my Mega Charizard, he can't really stay in here. He basically just ends up staying in to uh, stall out the sun. I was hoping that eventually I would get a critical hit somewhere in here just so that I could punish him for staying in for so long. But that crit doesn't come for several turns. Fortunately for me though, he is a scarf ditto. So he just basically stays in here and he wastes my sun turns and my PP. But he really was rolling the dice whether or not I was going to get a crit there because I was, I was doing enough damage that a crit would finish him off. Uh, so I also just wanted to punish him in case he did try to switch on into anything else. Um, now that the sun is not up, I know I can't do it KO him anymore. And that means I get a free switch on to Crustal because he's locked into Roost. And I can set up more entry hazards or uh, nothing on his team really wants to come in on a rock slide either. 
So if he decides to stay in here, I can one hit KO him. If he switches out, hopefully I can get some good damage on something. This crystal does have max attack. So that was really, really nice. Now I do catch Golbat on the switch there. He might've been predicting me to go for X Scissor um, just because I was using that more against Sableye than I was using Rock Slide. But nailing Golbat on the switch is perfect because now he has to choose if he wants to defog away these entry hazards or if he wants to try to put some damage on Crustal. Uh, this is a max attack, max speed Crustal. So uh, that's why my attacks are doing so much damage, just mittens. And this is not the same mittens that I bred in fifth gen. I rebred a new Crustal using that old uh, mitten. So kind of brought him out of retirement just to kind of rebreed him there. Now he does surprise me here going for U-turn. I, I switched out here expecting him to go for either defog again, expecting me to set up my entry hazards uh, or to just go straight out to his Sableye or something like that. But that's okay. Um, I figured if he had dark coverage, I would see it here. And if he didn't go for the offensive move, of course, he'd be stuck in with Prankster if he didn't want to Mega Evolve. And so I'm just going to, to do the thing where I just put immense offensive pressure on him because even with plus one from the Calm Mind, I think I can 2 KO him from here as long as the sun is up. Now the problem is uh, he is going to get this initial recover from the Prankster ability that he had at the beginning of the turn before he Mega Evolved. Uh, so that's a little unfortunate because I really needed Fire Blast to 2 it KO him. Um, that's okay though, because if I were using Fire Blast, I think after that Star War against Ditto earlier, I would have basically been out of Fire Blast. So I definitely needed every single one that I could get. And I really couldn't allow him any any room at all to set up. Because once his Sable I get set up, I can hit it with a bandit attack from my Crawdon. But other than that, I can't actually hit it hard enough to muscle through it. So I really needed to continue to threaten him. And he was just waiting for my son to stall once again. Because uh, once the sun goes down, I can't 2 it KO him. I do go out into Dragalge here, predicting the Will-O-Wisp to hit Crawdont. Um, I didn't want Crawdont burned, of course, and I don't have any way to get rid of the burn in this battle. So Dragalge is a pretty good candidate for that. I did will go for my own Scald. Now that the sun is down, I can try to aim for my own burn, and I get it, which is fantastic. Uh, burn, while of course it doesn't cut Sableye's attack, because he's not using any physical attacks, it adds on the pressure for him to recover, because now he's taking that additional... Um, HP damage each turn. Now I do miss a pretty crucial Draco Meteor. The Draco Meteor, even though he had plus one special defense, he had a chance to be KO'd by it after burn. Uh, and now he has plus two special defense, so I definitely can't take him out. And um, you'll see even at plus two special defense with adaptability and Draco plate, holy crap, that does a lot of damage. That did a lot more than I expected it to. So I was very pleased with Dragology for not only taking that hit, but then for living the burn and the plus two dark pulse, uh, this Dragalge has a little bit of speed. Not very much though, it's really all, almost all, I think it has like 224 in HP and the rest in special attack and a little bit in speed there. But uh, that investment really paid off. And here I made a very aggressive play going out into Crawdon, expecting him to go for recover. And that works out perfectly because if he stays in, he dies. Uh, he can't stay in there at all. A banded crab hammer. Um, it's just not anything that he can deal with. Now, unfortunately, I, I, while I am able to KO Golbat, I don't miss the attack, which is nice because I was really tempted to run a waterfall, but I wanted the extra critical hit chance and the extra power. Uh, I am basically threatened out by Star Raptor because I'm locked into Crab Hammer. Now, if I can get a little bit of damage on Star Raptor or force him to go for a double edge or Brave Bird, then he'll be easily in the range where I can finish him off with an Aqua Jet, unless he has his own quick attack, of course. Now, uh, I did predict Clefable to come in here because it's not really threatened by any of Rotom's moves. And so I figured that was a good time to trick it in my Scarf and I can pick up the leftovers to get a little bit more recovery from switching around into these Stealth Rocks so much. And he's locked into Stealth Rocks and so he kind of has to switch out and that switch is really, really obvious. So we're not going to go for a Volt Switcher, we're just going to go straight for Shadow Ball and do a very nice amount of damage to Mammoth Swine, securing a two-hit KO very, very easily. Now, with Mammoth Swine in here, I am worried that Mammoth Swine might be Scarf too. Uh, he actually just ends up going for Icicle Spear, which is a good move to have in this situation. There are several of my Pokemon that would love to run Substitute. I get really lucky and he gets a critical hit on the second one, which knocks me just into Custat Berry range, which means I get to get up my Stealth Rocks right before I go down. Uh, and of course, I also didn't get paralyzed a single time with Crustle, the only 
real issue there was my speed being lowered. But Crustle did such a great job for that being the first time that I brought him. Uh, and so now I get to go out to Crawdon once again and threaten with Bandit Aqua Jet. Uh, he does go out in the Sableye, but after the Stealth Rocks and a turn of burn, he cannot take two Bandit Aqua Jets. So, so very, very nice to get Sableye out of the way. And I, and I played really recklessly earlier. Um, I was really banking on the idea that he wouldn't just stay in and go for the attack or even just Will-O-Wisp again. So that worked out pretty well. Uh, he does bring in Star Raptor again. The Intimidate is really annoying because it's stopping me from leaving in Crawdon. And uh, based on the damage that this Brave Bird does, it's like, wow, that thing is looking like it's scarfed. Um, he actually doesn't take out my Rotom. And if you were banded, that definitely would have KO'd Rotom, even from full HP. But since he is scarfed, he is going to take a little bit of recoil damage. Rotom did very, very well in this battle, not only by getting crucial damage on the Mamoswine, which means that even if he has some type of weird item like a patch load barrier or something, I can take it out with Crawdon. And I crippled the Clefable by locking it in with this Choice Scarf as well. Now since he is um, just locked in a Brave Bird, I know I can live that hit. And uh, from this range, I should be able to take out Clefable with the Psy Shock if he decides to switch it in. So he does switch it in. And it is the 2 hit KO that I wanted it to be. Um, and since it was a 2 hit KO, it's likely that he was running a little bit more special defense to take on uh, something like Mega Charizard. I definitely didn't want to lock into Draco or anything in case he did switch out into Clefable. And if he goes out into Ditto, which is what he does here, unfortunately I do have to let Latios go down just because I don't have a good switch into the Draco Meteor. Um, and so that's not terrible because he does lose special attack when that happens. And that means I can go out into my Charizard Y. And this uh, most importantly gives me an opportunity to go for a Roost. So uh, he does switch out, even if he had gone for a Draco right there, would not have done very much damage. I could have predicted the switch out into Star Raptor, but I figured that after that level of HP, Star Raptor is no longer a problem because now I can take it out with the Banded uh, Aqua Jet from my Crawdont. So right there, it was just more important to get my HP back. Now I can switch out Go into Dragalge here, kind of as death fodder. Uh, Dragalge did perfectly earlier by getting that very, very crucial burn. He goes for a return, which really surprised me. I guess he had that on there so that he wouldn't keep on suffering so much uh, recoil damage. But even in the sun, this return is, uh, I'm sorry, this Aqua Jet is going to be enough to finish off the Star Raptor. And so now we're down into crunch time here because he has a 50-50 shot here. I did miss, I, it was really a mistake to bring a super effective move for Crawdon on Crawdon when he has a ditto. I was really hoping that he would take that and go for superpower. And so he actually does, and I, that was a 50-50 shot. He, if he had gone for the water type move, I would have lost. Um, but he has to go for two superpowers here. And after the attack drop, I figured with that extra HP bulk that I put on Charizard, I could definitely live another one. So I just stay in and go for Solar Beam. I was very tempted to roost in front of his face, but I also didn't want him to um, to switch out into anything. And uh, also, he there's a chance for a critical hit, of course. So why why risk any of that? But that means his last Pokemon is also going to be Mammal Swine, which is Scarfed. He has to lock into something, but it also doesn't matter what he locks into because he's lost so much HP thanks to Rotom earlier that we get to finish him off with a very clean... Uh, aqua jet attack so that's going to be a very very narrow very narrow razor thin margin even of a 1-0 victory against master roshi uh, fun battle he did not bring at all what i expected him to bring so we'll be facing him again later on in the playoffs most likely but if you guys enjoyed be sure to leave a like and i will talk to you all later bye now